<laughs> good morning ladies lovelies or afternoon or whenever it is that you're watching this um i'm coming to share in a very unpleasant experience that i've had um today with spirit airlines and yesterday i have never made a video about my dissatisfaction of customer service from any company ever in my life um and and so in order for me to even do this that lets you know that the customer service was ridiculously unprofessional um because i don't do this because i'm usually able to resolve things um um amicably or you know usually the uh, the company is um amenable to resolving the issue in a professional way um that honors the customer but that was not my experience today so i had a flight yesterday um with spirit airlines uh booked and got on the plane and boarded the plane with you know everyone else um the plane had issues the jump seat broke for the pilot um so because of jump seat broke of course the pilot couldn't oversee the student pilots who were training so we all well anybody who wanted to get off while they figured that out um and try to remedy that situation um, we were all told to get off the plane, go get something to drink, eat or whatever. We were given a $7, $7 meal voucher. Everyone who flies frequently knows that $7, you can't buy a meal at the airport for $7. It was a very insulting, uh, meal voucher, but yeah, we were provided a $7 meal voucher and, um, so that's just basically enough to get, it's not even enough to get a venti size um, coffee at Starbucks, okay, in the, in the in the airport. Anywho, so that was provided. We reboarded the plane. Once we got on the plane and began to taxi away from the gate, um, and this was at the, in, in the Detroit airport. So as we began to taxi away from the gate, um, there was a foul smell that began to emanate throughout the plane and fill the plane and it smelled like sulfur and then it began, began to get very thick and right before that um i'm kind of skipping but the air conditioning went off and it was really hot and stuffy on the plane and i was explaining to my the two people that were sitting next to me um that i've experienced that before when i was in um nigeria i was at a particular airport uh, smaller airport there and the same thing happened and we all had to get off the plane because the plane was not operable so I was telling her my experience about that I said we, we're probably all gonna have to get off this plane sure enough a few minutes about 30 minutes later the whole plane um the plane had the taxi back to a, uh, the gate again the um fire marshals came on the plane along with EMTs when we came off the plane from you know the little um the little gate that they that you walk through there was by the time we got to the ticket gate or the you know gate where the crew is there were stretchers and everything there because they were anticipating that one of us would have passed out right um somebody had pushed the call light I didn't realize it at the time because, of course, your adrenaline is going and things like that. But later on that day, I ended up returning home and sleeping for four hours. I had a massive headache. I don't even know what that fume was, but um, it had, we had the fire marshals. And then there was, like, airport police there, too. I don't know if somebody, if there was, like I said, they said mechanical. But I don't know if somebody put something on the plane because if it were mechanical, then why what would be the need for the police? I don't know. Maybe they're also trained in EMT. Maybe they, that's why they were there. I don't want to speculate on that, but I just thought, it, wow, that's interesting. Um, so fast forward afterwards, you know, they had a, a custom, um, a crew member who he was really nice. I can't, I didn't get his name. Um, shout out to him. He rebooked my flight. So when he rebooked my flight, um, he rebooked it for today and I was supposed to leave at 8, 10 a.m. Well, 
that didn't happen, obviously, because I'm still here. <laughs> um, so when I got to the airport, uh, he rebooked my flight for a gate um, D12. When I got to the airport, I got there early. I have clear, so I had plenty of time to just sit around and, you know, enjoy life, um, airport life. And so I went to Starbucks, got a coffee, and waited to for the uh, flight to be called. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> the flight was not called. <laughs> Sir, the flight never was called. Spirit... For whatever reason, my information was not put in the system correctly. I never got any text messages that the gate had been changed. I never got any announcement. No one called my name say, to say, hey, you know, the gate is, uh, you know, how they do. Um, we're boarding so-and-so. If you didn't, you know, if you're here, get to the gate. None of that happened. Nothing. So I'm sitting there at 725 when the gate, when we're supposed to start boarding. And I see the crew at the gate next to us, um, kind of shuffling around and they were talking about miscommunication. So they were like, oh, we just came from down at this other gate D16. I'm overhearing this conversation and me and this is another young lady sitting next to me. She could overhear it too. So she and I began to converse about it. So I, um, when they asked if people wanted to upgrade their seat, I was like, sure, I'll just upgrade my seat. So when I went up to upgrade, to ask about upgrading a seat, by this time it was about 740. Mind you, my flight is supposed to leave at 8.10. But I was like, okay, well, it looks like the same thing is happening. They're running late, having plane issues again. So I asked the um, girl at the you know counter about it and, and, and also about upgrading my seat. Well, at this point, she's like having trouble finding my seat. So... Um, finding me on the flight period. So she switches with another more experienced um, agent who also was like, oh no, you're going to have to go back up to the ticket counter at the front of the airport because your flight has already left. I was like, how did it leave when it's up there? She was like, oh no, this is a different flight going to Dallas. You're going to have to go back to the gate because your flight they're on they they've already closed the gate on yours they're 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 pulling off now and I was like how and I've been sitting here and so unbeknownst to me my gate had been changed from gate D12 to D16 with no notification no announcement no nothing I was livid because for one I was already emotional because today is my eyes sister's birthday my sister passed three years ago and so it's hard my birthday is coming up on Sunday so I already was emotional and had you know not in the best uh emotional space I get up to the ticket counter because the girl just told me you know I have to go back to the front to get rebooked onto that the, that flight the flight that was leaving that was also going to the same location which is Dallas was where I was trying to go she was like if you go up there now should be able to get rebooked and come back here or whatever you have clear it won't be a problem for you to get through TSA yada 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 I'm like cool I'll just get there an hour later no biggie right yes it was a big deal girl when I say <laughs> The supervisor at the freaking ticket gate was the rule is AF, okay? I, the, the, the agent who was controlling or supervising the line of people who had luggage issues, trying to um, get their luggage um, checked in, she escorted me and another young lady straight to the counter. When we get there, the supervisor goes, Oh, you guys had to wait to be called. And she and I looked at each other and, and the other girl, she was like trying to hold herself. She was like, <laughs> and so the, uh, there was an older man who was also an agent who saw that interaction and was like, oh, well, I'll help you. So he started helping her with their bag. And I was still waiting for this rude supervisor, um, um, to help me. So she waited on three other people, I believe intentionally because I had, you know, had skipped the line, but we were escorted up there by another crew member who told us to go there. Otherwise we would not have done that. 
because we had to express what our issues were and they were time sensitive. So we get there <laughs> and um, she she finally waits on me after she waited on three other people, not exaggerating, it was a woman and two men that she waited on before she waited on me. Then she proceeds to tell me, well, I can waive your booking fee or rebooking fee, but I can't get you on another flight today because those were the only two going out. You're gonna have to wait till tomorrow. And I'm like, what? First of all, I've already missed one day of my trip because your little janky plane issue. Now today I'm missing another one because you guys didn't notify me that there was a flight change and a gate change. Like the nothing. I received nothing. Okay. Um, so and then she proceeds to tell me, gaslight me and say, oh, well, there's always announcements. Oh, is this your first flight? I said, I probably take more flights than you do. And you probably got a buddy pass. And I, I'm pretty sure I probably travel more than you do. So no, this is not my first rodeo. And I was like, how insulting, one, two. And I said, and she was like, well, they, there's always announcements. I said, there was no announcement made. I've been back there for over an hour. I said, there was no announcement made. And I said, I know my name when I hear it and I would have responded. And I said, that's one. And two, I said, you all failed to send me any kind of text message or email, any type of written communication. I said, because if you had, I would have known that you had changed the flight or the gate and all of that down to the other end of the building. And on top of that, um, no one made any announcements for my name like they're supposed to. When someone is not on the flight that's or not at the gate that's supposed to be on the flight and you've boarded everyone, you're supposed to make an announcement for that person's name. My name was never called. Ever. Never called. No one. Because had they done that, I would have gone on there. And I told them, secondly, what if I were hearing impaired? You still should have sent some type of written communication to let me know that there was a change being made because I couldn't hear. <laughs> like, how else would I... Making an announcement would have done zero, absolutely nothing for me. Um, and so they failed to do that. And so when I called the um, customer service to say, just give me a full refund because I don't want to go anymore for a trip for one day because I was supposed to be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and coming back on Sunday. If I were to leave tomorrow, that would that means that I would be leaving on Saturday, spending the night, and coming right back on Sunday. That's not a vacation. That's not a trip. And then the things that I had scheduled to do with, with my friends, we're gonna miss those events. Well, I'm gonna miss the events. They can still go. I had to forward them the tickets, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, they did nothing to try to compensate me. They didn't try to find another flight. Didn't try to put me on another airline. Didn't try to do anything. There was ample time because I heard her the the supervisor speaking to the woman, um, the one that escorted us up to the um, ticket counter to have our issues resolved in the first place. She was telling the guy that who had the overweight luggage that is thirty minute, thirty eight minutes to. The gate closing, which meant that she had 38 minutes to rebook that flight for me. She rebooked me on a flight, but just not on the one that was leaving today, which made no sense since I was standing right there and had just come from back there at that gate and told her what the other uh, young lady had said. If, if she re would rebook it, I could come back and get on that flight and I can still pay the little $10 upgrade for the exit row. But no, she refused to rebook it, not because she couldn't, but because she just wouldn't. They need to do something, Spirit Airlines need to do something about their rule, unprofessional um, staff. Um, I've heard about them being rude and unprofessional before, um, but I hadn't experienced it um, because I've flown with them in time. You know, if, if I'm taking a flight that's, two to three hours or less, I'll take them. I've taken them in the past. I haven't had any issues with flight cancellations. So this is my first experience with this or even having to really contact customer service or anything. So I wasn't aware of how rude they could be. I've heard about it, but I've experienced it for myself today. And it's ridiculous. They need to change their, um, Spare Airlines, you need to change your customer service uh, approach. It's ridiculous. Um, there's no humanity in it. 
Um, there's no um, care for the customer in it. Um, there is no um, uh, respect. And that's ridiculous. Like, how do you think that you're going to keep thriving and keep, um, I guess it's, well, you're, you're banking on the fact that, oh, well, people, there are people who, you know, on the middle class to lower income brackets and they don't have a choice but to fly with us. So we're going to always get them no matter what. I think that's the, the idea. So we can just treat them anyhow we want. That's what, how it comes across. That's, and if that's not the intention, that is what is felt. That's why people keep making videos about your lack of customer service. So fast forward after literally me being on phone and chat with customer service for, what time is it? It's 11.32. So I literally just got off with them when I started this video. So what, about 11.15? Because this video, <laughs> we're 16 minutes in. So I was on the phone with them from for over two hours, like two and a half, closer to two and a half hours, um, chatting with the the AI bot and then being transferred to a real person, um, as well as online or on hold talking to someone physically. I literally, literally threatened and did to make a complaint with the Better Business Bureau. Um, I filed a complaint with the Better Business Bureau because they were refusing to accommodate me. They did not want to give me a refund, told me that they couldn't give me a, a refund, told me that um, they wouldn't give me a refund, and um, they needed to do an investigation to see if what I was saying is true. Um, I said, so what do you want me to do? Get documentation and at what time I went through clear to show exactly what time I arrived at the airport? Is that what you're saying? I said, or, or you just basically blatantly calling me a liar. Um, I was livid. I had no reason to lie. If I hadn't been late or if the issue had been my fault, I would have accepted that, you know, responsibility and been accountable for it. But I had been there and it wasn't my fault that they never communicated with me that there were flight and gate changes. It definitely wasn't my fault that the plane malfunctioned yesterday or somebody put a bomb or something. I don't know what that was yesterday with that sulfur smell, but that gave me a headache. But, um, you know, um, but the fact that they weren't even trying to accommodate me is ridiculous. So finally, after two hours, over two hours of back and forth, they finally agreed to issue me a full refund however we think the whole contrary mover is not resolved because my luggage my luggage likely left on the flight this morning okay um even though i didn't because it was still there from yesterday they didn't return it to me i tried to collect it yesterday and they were like oh we don't have the manpower for that um and so i didn't get my luggage back so now, now, um, it's a whole nother Oprah show trying to get my luggage. So I, <laughs> when I say I'm, I live it, messed up my whole birthday weekend. I had plans, had a, a day party that I was supposed to go to tomorrow. I had a high fashion event that I was supposed to go to tonight. Um, I was supposed to see both of my best friends cause they both live in Dallas now in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I was supposed to spend time with them. Those are like my sisters from from another mother. <laughs> um, I, you know, I am just utterly and totally disappointed. Um, but more than the disappointment, I'm, I just feel totally um, disregarded and disrespected and dehumanized in, um, by the experience with Spirit's lack of customer service or lack of empathy for their customers. They really could do better. And like I told the lady, the uh, representative that I spoke with earlier, if I, I would, uh, this is one of those times where if I had a disability, I would have definitely filed an ADA complaint against them because 
they don't they didn't don't have anything in place for somebody who is hearing impaired if there were uh, let's just say the announcement actually had happened which it did not but if it had someone who's hearing impaired would not have heard it they still should have sent a text message and or an email to notify the customer that there was a gate change or that there was a time scheduling change not just leaving it up to the customer to try to wander around and figure it out there um the screen that was at the gate that i was at did say that um did have like a different um destination on it which is why i went and looked at the bigger screen and found the other gate that was going to dallas it did not have um like two dallas flights showing anymore it was just literally the one gate so i went to that gate which was the gate next to d12 and I, that's how I ended up interacting with the people that told me, oh, no, that gate moved, was moved down to D16. And they're closed, they've closed the gate. They're going to get ready to taxi. You can't get on that one, but you can get on this one. But just ask the supervisor to rebook you on it because it's so late that we can't, we don't have the authority to rebook it. Well, that's wild that they let me know that that was a possibility. She could, she had the authority, could have made sure that I made it to my destination with just being only an hour late, but refused to do so. And that's just freaking ridiculous. Um, so I said all that to say, if you have somewhere that you just really have to be until Spirit Airlines, like if you, if it's time sensitive, until Spirit Airlines changes their customer service and um, how they choose to treat their customers, then you might want to think about booking with another airline because they are not it. They are not it. They could care less. Um, the employees act like they're doing you a favor and not like you're paying their salary <laughs> when you're spending your coin, your hard-earned money with them. They're just acting like it's whatever. Um, sucks to be you. Hopefully, you know, things work out for you. You know, that... Uh, just... I, I'm just, like, floored by it. So, um, yeah. If when Spirit sees this, I hope that you go back to the drawing board on your policies as to how you... Uh, accommodate customers when things happen that are beyond the customer's control what you in what you you do to try to um, compensate them first of all stop giving out the, those little um, insufficient insulting seven dollar meal vouchers you should at least be starting at 10 because 10 might get you a sandwich might uh, depending on the airport. Um, there's nothing to drink with that 10. They really need to be $20 and up. So stop doing that because that's insulting. That's one. Two, when there is sufficient time to rebook a passenger on a flight that is not completely full, when I know for a fact today that the exit row was completely empty all the way across the plane. All six seats were available. When there's space to rebook a, uh, a passenger on it, then do so. Like, why, my little extra close to 200 pounds would not have made the difference in whether or not the plane was over the, over, over, over the weight, over the passenger weight. It just would not have. Um... Also, if the customer is saying, if you know that there's flight issues, uh, whether it's cancellations for whatever reason, or um, missed flights for what, you know, whatever reason, the, if it wasn't the customer's fault, then don't make them have to jump through hoops and threaten to file complaints against you in order to get a refund. Just give them the freaking money back. Because, I mean, that's the end result anyway. Give them their freaking money back. Don't sit there and argue back and forth and, and tell the customer, well, it's our policy to do this and our policy to do that. I had to ask, 
ask to speak to a supervisor and then still spend an extra, you know, ungodly amount of time on the phone. I'm already having a bad experience and then you just want to like just pour salt in the wound. Like I'm so, I, I really want an apology and I really want more than just my refund. You, the least they could have done was offered me a future fl flight. For the flight, oh, that's another thing. The flight that um, was canceled because of the mechanical issues, they offered me a $50 voucher towards a future flight. What the freak is the $50, $50 going to do? Tell me, even on Spirit, what is $50 towards a flight going to do on a canceled flight? Like, that's what I'm talking about, about the level of disrespect. Like, it's ridiculous. That's insulting. Do better, Spirit.